Hey everyone, uh, Mr. Honeycutt here. Uh, I am a sixth grade social studies and language arts teacher at Woodland Park Middle School. And as as many unknowns as we have with this year, um, I am excited to be teaching again, no matter how what that teaching looks like, whether it or not it's me sitting here uh, through a screen um, in in my little home office here, um, or it might look differently than that too. Uh, just kind of going through some examples here might end up looking quite a bit different than in years past, but no matter what. Uh, myself and uh, my teaching team, my sixth grade teaching team, are so incredibly excited to get started with teaching, no matter what our classrooms look like. Uh, in this video today, the theme of this video is how the little things complete the big picture. Um, and that theme, um, the little things, is going to be a theme that you're going to notice in all of your core classes. Uh, to be clear, your core classes, that's going to be your language arts, your social studies, your science, and your math. And the little things are a major, um, how the little things complete the big picture is going to be a theme in all of your classes. To get started on what exactly that means, we're going to first look at um, uh, language arts which we are going to be going into plot. Um, this right here is a standard plot line. Now, I know um, maybe you've seen a plot line before, maybe you haven't. Um, this is what we're going to focus on in language arts, um, especially as we get started by reading the book Holes, which I am so pumped to do. It's one of the best ways to start the year is reading the book Holes. And we're going to start looking at how you can almost make a plot line with any book or movie that you see. It is a formula that you can apply to any movie that you're watching or book that you're reading. Um, you can typically make a plot line through, uh, through it. Now, there are some exceptions. Um, sometimes there's bad exceptions, like my uh, Star Wars movie that I made in sixth grade definitely did not have a plot line, and it was really bad. Um, but in most things, um, you're going to be able, uh, once we go into uh, what a plot line is, you're going to be able to go into that plot line or start making plot lines of whatever movie you're watching or book that you're reading. Um, plot lines, uh, for example, um, they follow the plot line of the main protagonist in the story. Um, starting from the very beginning, when the characters and setting are introduced, when the conflict first appears, um, the conflict being what kind of drives the story, um, and, um, and the climactic moment, the most intense moment of the book or the, mo uh, or the movie that you're thinking of right now, because I know some of you already are thinking about this. Um, the last steps of the plot line are the falling action. Um, that's um, the last part of the movie um, that kind of leads to the very end, which is the resolution. Now, if you're, um, I don't want you to freak out. You don't have to know these things now. That's what we're going to go into in further videos is how exactly a plot line works. Now, one challenge I'm going to have for everyone is if you can make a plot line from the perspective of Thanos in Avengers Affinity War if you do watch that movie. Now, if you aren't a fan of the Avengers, that's totally fine. You can make a plot line with so many different movies and books that are out there. That leads us to our second subject. Now, we talked about holes. We're going to have a tie into holes in social studies because the first thing you are going to go into in social studies this year is map making. You're going to be able to design your own personal island um, on a map, and you can include anything on that island that you want. It was a hugely popular project last year, and I can't wait for you to get started with that in social studies. But here's a really important thing. In order for a map to be a good map, we then go back to the little things, right? And the little things on the map are going to be the map key. And the map key allows you to understand what you're looking at on this map. If you didn't have a map key, you might wonder why some parts of the United States are colored differently than others. But this map key tells you that it's uh, that it is separated by elevation. Um, uh, red being the higher parts of the United States. Yellow, that kind of middle part of the United States in terms of elevation or how high you are in the country. And green being the lowest points. Um, 
A map key is so incredibly important. It's a little thing, but without a key to your map, you wouldn't understand what you're looking at on the map. You wouldn't know why um, things are shaded the way they are on this map. And with almost any map, finding a key is going to be incredibly important to understand the information that you're seeing. So in English, the little things were a plot line. Um, understanding and trying to find a plot line in each of in, um, each of the stories, uh, whether those stories be a movie or a book. In social studies, it's going to be a map key. Um, how it's going to tie into English is you're going to have to make a map of Camp Green Lake. Now, this can be a lot of fun because in this map making project, not only can you make your own personal map or personal island on a piece of paper, we encourage students to also use Minecraft if they're trying to create their perfect personal island. Um, we also, we've had students who have used Fortnite before and made a map of Fortnite and a map key of Fortnite so that old folks like myself can understand what we're looking at when we look at a map of Fortnite. Um, I want to see those wheels turn and I want you figuring out what certain things you, can you do in order to make a map. And the last part of this map making unit, you will have to create a map of Camp Green Lake since you are all going to be reading that in language arts, you are welcome to use, uh, you doesn't have to be on a piece of paper, you're welcome to use many different things in order to create that map. So let's jump to science. In science, you're going to be learning about the scientific process. This is one of the most critical foundational skills that we can learn today because the scientific process is what um, many scientists and researchers use whenever they're conducting new experiments, right? If they're trying to conduct a new experiment for a scientific breakthrough, that starts with asking a question. So what problem are they hoping their experiment can solve? They're then going to make um, do some background research to get uh, familiarized with the subject. They're then going to conduct a hypothesis, so that's an educated guess about how their experiment is going, uh, what the outcome of their experiment is going to be. They're going to do their experiment and then they're going to publish their findings. Um, in this experiment, you'll notice that it's broken down again by the little things. And But these little things are critically important right now. Scientific experiments and studies are what has given us the information we've needed to combat um, an unprecedented uh, global pandemic. Um, it's how scientists and medical researchers give us the best advice possible so that we can safely go into public places, uh, so that we can go into essential businesses. You might also notice that sometimes they revise their recommendations. These happen with new experiments because if you conduct an experiment using the scientific method and it's the same experiment that someone else has conducted but there is a different result, that means that multiple scientists are going to do the experiment again in order to find the truth of the situation. These are little things, little experiments that can sometimes lead to big truths being discovered. And in a world right now where we have an unprecedented medical um, um, medical pandemic or global pandemic where we have, we're all under the threat of our climate crisis, finding, um, finding new students who are uh, incredibly interested in scientific breakthroughs and scientific studies and this scientific process, it might feel like a little thing, but it can be so hugely important in a world where we need more scientists. Last but not least, we're going to go to math. And what better way to talk about the little things than fractions, right? Literally parts of a whole. My favorite one you might notice is the one-eighth right here because the one-eighth always reminds me of pizza. Um, but fractions are incredibly important and being able to apply those fractions are important. Um, I use fractions every single day when I worked at Applebee's um, and uh, when uh, whether or not um, I uh, was actually making things at Applebee's, um, like making actually following recipes, or if I was calculating um, if I was calculating my tip share. So as a server, 4% of everything I made went back to Applebee's and suddenly I figured out real quickly that that was 
one twenty-fifth. So for every twenty-five dollars I made as a server, one dollar would go back to Applebee's. You learn those things very quickly. And fractions I apply on a daily basis um, in my um, as a teacher, but also when I'm at home, right? Because I looked this up. Um, if I'm going to make chocolate chip cookies that my wife is going to love, there are eleven ingredients. But it's very important that I follow all of the little steps in the ingredients because I could get 10 of those 11 ingredients perfectly but if I forget sugar then those chocolate then those chocolate chip cookies are not going to taste very good it's why all steps it's why all of these little steps matter um, students this year is going to look a lot different for many different reasons. But no matter what, and no matter how this year looks like, we as teachers are so incredibly excited to be teaching again and to be getting to know you as students again and be and doing everything we can to help you succeed. Um, to go back um, in um, to go back to um, what we were talking about today, we're going to be focusing on the little things. Um, so while there might be a lot of big things happening on the planet that are outside of our control, we are going to be focusing on the little things on a daily basis and figuring out how you can succeed. Because those little successes that you're going to make this year are going to make a big difference for your future. And we cannot wait to be here for you this year, no matter how it looks. Thank you all so much.